Greetings, BCC community. Greetings. I know we're going to have um, faculty, students, staff, members of the community filtering in because it's between classes, but we're very excited to um, give our greetings to everyone today. Um, my name is Sally Gabb, and I am the Reading Skills Specialist with the Quest program here at Bristol Community College. And you can well imagine as a reading specialist that this fall, I've been beside myself with joy because all over campus, people are reading. And this has been, of course, close to my heart. Um, and I keep finding proof that reading is something that people at BCC enjoy. Um, a few announcements before we continue with our wonderful celebratory program today. If you have your cell phone, would you please turn it off? Thank you much. Um, so a little bit of history. This is a celebration for our Bristol Community College One Book Community Read. It was August 2008 when a few book and reading fanatics, including myself, were inspired at the same time. We needed a one book college community reading project here at BCC. We had heard about it at other places, and we thought, we need that here at BCC. Through a democratic process of nomination and voting, we selected our book, Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi, the fascinating graphic memoir telling her story of growing up in revolutionary Iran. Now, 16 months later, we have seen the success of this project on our campus. Everybody's waving the little pink book. And the statistics are really enlightening. All of our new students had a chance to get the book when we started school in the fall. At least 25 instructors here at BCC have put um, Persepolis into their curriculum, and 16 different courses are using it as a part of their syllabus. We believe that, well, we know that at least 900 students across our four campuses are reading Persepolis, and we believe it's thousands. <laughs> students, faculty, staff, community alike have read and talked about our one book, Persepolis. We've hosted a fabulous speaker on graphic novels, and we've had two exciting contests to celebrate our one book. You can see the uh, examples of the art contests outside in the brick area. I'll talk about that a little later. This could not have happened without the support across the campus at all levels. On the back of your program, we have listed those who have contributed to making One Book BCC a reality. We wanted to give special thanks to faculty members who have included it in their syllabus, because that really made it a situation where students had to carry around the book. And so let's give a hand to this hearty crew who um, actually made this a reality. I will note that I know that students are going to be filtering in through this hour, so although they've missed my stellar remarks at the beginning, they will have a chance to hear the rest of our exciting program. Today we are winding up this first One Book BCC project with this fabulous celebration today. And so it's with great pleasure that I welcome someone who has expressed support for our project from the very beginning, Vice President Sarah Garrett. Thank you so much. And I really wish to thank everyone who has been so um, much a part of making this happen, the faculty, all of you students who have been involved with uh, the reading of Persepolis, one of the things that um, uh, made me feel really happy about the One Book Project is that growing up in our household, my father constantly said to us, read, reading maketh the whole man, he would say. Always read. And at that time, and I'm not going to say my age, I heard some snickering going on. Okay, but, you know, I never had at that uh, point in time, you know, um, dreamed about Kindles and things like that, but I grew up reading, all the time reading. And any opportunity that you have to pick up a book and read, it takes you places. 
What I loved about the selection of Persepolis is that the topic, you know, today I was, um, I, I stayed in a little later this morning at home so that I could listen to President Obama as he accepted the Nobel uh, Peace Prize and, and gave his lecture. And he spoke about um, the need for the, the world in order to make um, a difference when it comes to peace for individual nations to take a stand. And when you read um, Persepolis, the thing that jumps out in, in this story is not just uh, the witnessing of the tragedies and the losses, but the need to stand up and to speak out against the atrocities that she witnessed as a child. And that is a message for all of us, to stand up and be a voice to what we witness as injustices, because only then can we make a difference. And that was something that I thought was so wonderful about the selection of Persepolis. And so you're selecting this book and um, putting the message out for others to read it. Um, put the message out to make a difference by being not only um, putting that message into action in your own lives, but putting the message out there for others to put it into action in their lives as well. President Sprague couldn't be here today and he asked me to extend his best wishes and thanks and gratitude to all of you who have been a part of this project because it is part of what makes BCC so wonderful, what makes BCC a family of learners. Thank you for your involvement in this project. Thank you for your involvement in the community. And thank you for selecting Persepolis. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Sarah, for your wonderful remarks and making Persepolis really appropriate for what's going on in the world today. It's really important for us to recognize that as we read, we inform ourselves and we learn and connect ourselves to the rest of the world. Now, exciting moments. It's time to announce the contest winners. And we've been thrilled with the responses, the creative and um, intelligent responses to our requests for both essay and art contests. First, we will announce the winners of the Persepolis Art Contest, which was fully uh, supported by the Fine Arts Department here at BCC. Contestants use themes from Persepolis in, in graphic arts expression. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the examples of these contributions out on the board in the brick area and where you'll be invited to join us later. The presenters are representing the individuals, organizations, or departments that made these prizes possible. Marisa Millard from the Art Department will announce the honorable mentions and third prize winners for the art contest. Deborah Lawton will present the second prize and Debbie Dizik will present the first prize. As I said, they represent the folks who made these prizes possible who are listed in your program. Okay, I'm gonna announce the honorable mentions. Uh, Russell Graves. Of course, I had to go first. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> this is why I teach studio art classes. Yeah, but I, I called Russell first. Russell, where are you? I know you're here. <laughs> Christine Coet. Okay. 
Ala Durgapuko. That's why I never say your last name in class, Ala. Ken Fontaine. And Russ Orkut. Okay, I'm also gonna announce the third prize winner is sponsored by the BCC Art and Design Programs, and it's Erica Jones. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of Division I and the Liberal Arts and Sciences Program to present the second prize, $50 to Eric, and I hope I'm not going to mispronounce this, Eric Campanachon. Eric's name is C. Pant Chenacon. Thank you, Eric. I'm Debbie Dietzik, and I'm here on behalf of the Alumni Association. The Alumni Association was honored to sponsor the $100 first, prize, first place prize, and that's awarded to Jennifer Avery. Again, with this exciting graphic memoir, we were able to expand expression and look at the connections between visual and written expression. So let's give a hand again to all of the art contest winners. Um, and now the um, winners for the, the writing contest will be announced by um, Deb Lawton. Hi, there are five honorable mention awards that were sponsored by Information Technology Services. Victoria Horton. Leanne Mocker. Thank you. Erin Giella. Brian Martins. And Melanie Lima. Division I in the Liberal Arts and Sciences Program sponsored a second prize, a $50 award, to Justine Pegg. Thank you very much. And finally, the first place award for the essay contest, which was in fact sponsored by um, President Sabrega, will be awarded by Vice President Sarah Garrett.
The first place prize uh, sponsored by President Jack Spraga in the amount of $100 is presented to Brittany Koala. Thank you so much, presenters. Let's give a huge round of applause again for these winners. I want to remind people that these projects were done on students' own time, that this was outside of the many assignments and work and reading that students have had to do this semester. So it, it particularly bespeaks the importance of getting people excited about reading and connecting reading to the work that they are doing here at BCC. So once again, I think we, they deserve an additional round of applause. <laughs> and before we go further um, for our really exciting performance today, I want to remind you that um, after the performance, we will have coffee, tea, and Middle Eastern pastries out in the brick area. You will also have a chance to uh, view the, um, the art contest winners. And in addition, you will have a chance to nominate, the, we said vote, but it's actually nominating, nominate the book for next year. There is a nomination box and slips that we printed. So we encourage everyone to think of your favorite book or a book that has really impressed you, had an impression on your life. The nomination process will go on through the spring. And um, so this isn't the only opportunity, but we wanted to start this today because now that we've had this great beginning of our one book celebration here at BCC, we want to be sure it continues, that we continue to celebrate reading. Finding a uh, performer for our celebration was sort of an adventure for us. We um, looked for, I had in fact friends who were Iranian puppeteers. They couldn't come. We tried to find people who might have been um, born in Iran and could speak, or folks that had shared similar experiences. Um, thanks to um, Connie Trepanier, Division VI Secretary, who is a wonderful explorer on the internet, we found an incredible Iranian-American performer to join us today to provide us with a real sample of the fusion of Iranian and Persian music with uh, her American influences. The um, the Boston Globe, um, and I want you to know also, Hale, who was our performer, has a wonderful website, and we encourage everyone to look it up as well. Hale has been celebrated around the region for the work that she is now producing. The Boston Globe said, Hale sings with a supple, blissful Persian flair and the intensity of an arena rocker. While she quotes mystic poets or slashes guitar riffs, her electric band of downtown New Yorkers kicks out hypnotic grooves. Her name is Halle, like hallelujah, and she's ready to break out. So we are very excited, and I think she's going to take a minute to get herself set up, but um, we're very excited to have uh, with us today Halle, and um, so thank you once again, and let's welcome Halle to our stage. Thank you so much. I, uh, came, we came in from New York about half an hour ago or so, and uh, one of the, oh, Connie took us to the wall where the art is hanging, and I loved, I loved the pieces. I checked out the little blurbs under them, and it was very beautiful, very impressed. Um, I, uh, 
I was born here in New York, uh, Persian parents, and I didn't much care that I was Persian for most of my life. And when I started writing songs, I was writing only in English. And eventually, I started reading Rumi, um, translated into English by Coleman Barks. And Rumi, you know, is a mystic poet from 800 years ago. And the message he had, and the message Hafez, and all these Persian mystic poets had at that time in my life was just so important and so amazing. Um, love, you know, they were talking about love. They were talking about relaxation. They were talking about release, and release from anxiety and all these um, sort of challenging emotions that we have as human beings. And it was just a, a, big, a big thing for me to get into that. And I started singing in Persian. And so now you will hear some songs in Persian and some songs in English. And um, this first one is called Avariya Sahra and means uh, I could be lost at sea, I could be a wanderer in the desert, I could be without name or title, I could be without city or country, as long as I have love. I'm going to the peak of the wave, I'm going to the heights of love, I'm full of wing and feather. I'm going to the peak of the wave, going to the heights of love. I'm a lantern in the dark. In the lema, dar hasrat dast o sahrost, ta ba mah o ba setare. همراه و هم سفر شم آباری سهرا میتونم باشم گنگشه دریا میتونم باشم بی سر و سامان میتونم باشم بی شهر و کشور میتونم باشم اما بی عشق اما بی عشق نمیتونم 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 آباری سهرا میتونم باشم گنگشه دریا میتونم بی سر و سامان میتونم باشم بی شهر و کشور میتونم اما بی عشق اما بی عشق نمیتونم 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 از خود رها بشو از خود رها بشو با عشق زندگی از خود رها بشو با عشق زندگی از خود رها بشو با عشق زندگی می روم بالا تا اوج پر از بال پر از پر راه می بینم در شب پر از فانوس پر از نور می روم بالا تا
what medicine songs are. This is a medicine song that I wrote. This is in English. And uh, sort of a, there's a, actually there's a line in one of Hafez's poems. He says, uh, he says, fear is a cheap motel. I would love to see you living under better conditions. So in that spirit, here is the moon song. Yeah. 
and percussion. Okay. Oh, I'm deciding between Persian or English. We're going to do one more song. Um, همه هستی من آیه تاریکی است که تو را در خود تکرار در خود تکرار می کند به سرگاه رستنهای عبدی می برد به سرگاه رستنهای تکرار در خود تکرار می کنم من تو را در 